Hi. I'm going to start this one. It's on black holes. Black holes are one of the strangest things in existence. They don't seem to make any sense at all. Where do they come from? And what happens if you fall into one? In the last video, there was this conversation between Philomena Kunk and astrophysicist Brian Cox about black holes that made me want to check if Kyrgyz Act had any videos on them. It turns out they have three or four, but I think this one is serving as the explainer video that the other ones are based off of, or at least I hope because that's why I chose this one. They have a new video on how to destroy a black hole. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll link it in the description for you. Stars are incredibly massive collections of mostly hydrogen atoms that collapse from enormous gas clouds under their own gravity. In their core, nuclear fusion crushes hydrogen atoms into helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. This energy, in the form of radiation, pushes against gravity, maintaining a delicate balance between the two forces. As long as there is fusion in the core, a star remains stable enough. But for stars with way more mass than our own sun, the heat and pressure at the core allow them to fuse heavier elements until they reach iron. Unlike all the elements that went before, the fusion process that creates iron doesn't generate any energy. Iron builds up at the center of the star until it reaches a critical amount, and the balance between radiation and gravity is suddenly broken. The core collapses. Within a fraction of a second, the star implodes, moving at about a quarter of the speed of light, feeding even more mass into the core. I definitely could have used a video with visuals like this when I was in school learning these subjects. It's at this very moment that all the heavier elements in the universe are created as the star dies in a supernova explosion. This produces either a neutron star, or if the star is massive enough, the entire mass of the core collapses into a black hole. If you looked at a black hole, what you'd really be seeing is the event horizon. Anything that crosses the event horizon needs to be traveling faster than the speed of light to escape. In other words, it's impossible. So we just see a black sphere reflecting nothing. But if the event horizon is the black part, what is the whole part of the black hole? The singularity. We're not sure what it is exactly. A singularity may be infinitely dense, meaning all its mass is concentrated into a single point in space with no surface or volume, or something completely different. Right now, we just don't know. It's like a dividing by zero error. By the way, black holes do not suck things up like a vacuum cleaner. If we were to swap the sun for an equally massive black hole, nothing much would change for Earth, except that we would freeze to death, of course. The fact that we don't know what's in a black hole just takes me back to that thought of how much of our understanding of the universe, but specifically space, is based on theory and hypotheses and educated guesses, sometimes speculation. Like how many of the words did he use in this video so far? We're about halfway through. Are in the conditional tense. Would, may, could. And then I wonder if AI is going to transform space exploration in our lifetimes. And we figure out what's in a black hole. But then you hear some of the conversations coming out of that AI safety summit earlier this month. I don't know if you saw that. This month, I'm recording this in November 2023. But some of the speakers were seemingly convinced that AI is going to implode mankind as we know it. And I'm only half kidding because I think some of the speakers were being hyperbolic, others not so much. I'll link you this speech from, ah, what's the British PM's name, the new one? Relatively new, Rishi Sunak. I'll link you his speech from that summit and you can just form your own opinions and get back to me. What do you think is gonna come first? That AI has a really negative effect on humankind or we figure out what's in a black hole? I'd be fine dying before either of those things happen. What would happen to you if you fell into a black hole? The experience of time is different around black holes. From the outside, you seem to slow down as you approach the event horizon, so time passes slower for you. At some point, you would appear to freeze in time, slowly turn red, and disappear. While from your perspective, you can watch the rest of the universe in fast forward, kind of like seeing into the future. 
Right now, we don't know what happens next, but we think it could be one of two things. One, you die a quick death. A black hole curves space so much that once you cross the event horizon, there is only one possible direction. You can take this literally inside the event horizon. You can only go in one direction. It's like being in a really tight alley that closes behind you after each step. The mass of a black hole is so concentrated, at some point even tiny distances of a few centimeters would mean that gravity acts with millions of times more force on different parts of your body. Your cells get torn apart as your body stretches more and more until you're a hot stream of plasma, one atom wide. Two, you die a very quick death. Very soon after you cross the event horizon, you would hit a firewall and be terminated in an instant. Neither of these options are particularly pleasant. How soon you would die depends on the mass of the black hole. A smaller black hole would kill you before you even entered its event horizon, while you probably could travel inside a supermassive black hole for quite a while. As a rule of thumb... Muse? Anyone? Also, this is giving Doctor Who's impossible planet, if you've ever seen that. The further away from the singularity you are, the longer you live. Black holes come in different sizes. There are stellar mass black holes with a few times the mass of the sun and the diameter of an asteroid. And then there are these supermassive black holes which are found at the heart of every galaxy and have been feeding for billions of years. Currently, the largest supermassive black hole known is S50014 plus 81, 40 billion times the mass of our sun. It is 236.7 billion kilometers in diameter, which is 47 times the distance from the sun to Pluto as powerful as maybe we found a bigger black hole since this video was published i don't know i feel like our technological capabilities are so much better now than they were five years ago let alone seven years ago so i think it's possible yeah if you know if there's a bigger black hole than gosh this naming system's wild to me s50014 plus 81 let us know black holes are they will eventually evaporate through a process called hawking radiation to understand how this works we have to look at empty space empty space is not really empty but filled with virtual particles popping into existence and annihilating each other again when this happens right on the edge of a black hole one of the virtual particles will be drawn into the black hole and the other will escape and become a real particle so the black hole is losing energy this happens incredibly slowly at first and gets faster as the black hole becomes smaller. When it arrives at the mass of a large asteroid, it's radiating at room temperature. When it has the mass of a mountain, it radiates with about the heat of our sun, and in the last second of its life, the black hole radiates away with the energy of billions of nuclear bombs in a huge explosion. But this process is incredibly slow. The biggest black holes we know might take up to a googold years to evaporate. This is so long that when the last black hole radiates away, nobody will be around to witness it. The universe will have become uninhabitable long before then. This is not the end of our story. There are loads more interesting ideas about black holes. We'll explore them in part two. All right, this was from Kurzgesagt. Is that second G pronounced or it's silent? The German words always get me. Du weißt? Tell me if you want to watch part two, because I do. And based on absolutely no scientific reason, just a feeling, I assumed one would die if they fell into a black hole. So great to see that confirmed. I also hope that I'm never in a situation to figure that out for myself. I doubt that I ever would be. If we come to, or if we have come to a different understanding on any of the concepts that he spoke about, please update us down below in the comments and just leave your thoughts in general. For a literary recommendation, I think the black holes are often used in literature to trigger a time travel storyline, but I can't think of a specific example off of the top of my head. I just finished a book called House of Leaves. It was a very experimental writing style, but it's a story about this guy. He's a tattoo artist in LA and he's very into drugs and nightlife and what have you. But anyway, he had to move. And in his new place, he found this manuscript for a documentary that led his interest to a house in Virginia. And this house is bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. So the dimensions are all off and there's this maze labyrinth type thing in the hallways. Anyway, it's a glitch in the matrix type of story. 
that was not a good summary. <laughs> so I'm going to find a real summary, link that for you and the book. But if you can think of a book that's more on the subject, please let us know. And for your music recommendation, not Supermassive Black Hole by Muse, but just saying that name unlocks this core memory of being a little girl in the car with my mom while she was driving me to school. And that song was seemingly on every single time I would turn on the radio. Not for a glitch in the matrix reason, matrix, matrix reason. It was just that popular in its time. Uh, what's another song in my, there's this, I believe it's a fan made unofficial music video for a song by Future Islands called Like the Moon that uses footage from the sci-fi film. Future Islands, I would say, falls into the indie pop rock category with very strong vocals. The lead singer has a beautiful voice. I'm going to link that song for you. And then Space Song by Beach House is another one. That song seemingly always shifts my emotions to sad when I hear it. It comes from the album called Depression Cherry, so I shouldn't be surprised by that. But... Beach House, I think, would sit more in the indie, yes, but dream pop genre. That's a slower song. Let me know which one you like better. Other than that, that's really all I have. So leave your thoughts on any of this. And thank you for watching with me. I'll catch you in the next.